Welcome back survivalists. Today we're building an ammo can urban survival kit. So why would you want to build a survival kit out of an ammo can anyway? But one, these things are very rugged, right? This is very versatile. You could literally throw this off a cliff and the thing would probably be okay, right? You could have this in the back of your car, flip your car, and this thing would probably be okay. And these are also fairly water resistant. I don't quite want to say waterproof completely, but it's pretty dang close. They have a rubber gasket in there and they have a pretty heavy duty latch system here as well. And I would feel pretty confident about keeping this outdoors and you know, confident that the rainwater is not going to get into this. So this is, may not be a bad option for a container for your survival kit. And so today we're gonna go through all the items that I've put in here so far and why I put those in there. Now, before I start breaking this kit down though, there are two caveats that I wanna point out. One is that this is gonna be an urban survival kit. So my mentality of what items I put in here is gonna be different than a wilderness survival kit. Wilderness survival kit probably gonna be a little bit more of an emphasis on building shelter, processing wood, starting fire. But with an urban situation, you know, I'm assuming that you already have a decent shelter. And let's say you get trapped in your office building or something, I don't necessarily want you starting a fire in the middle of your office building. So your priorities are gonna be a little bit different with an urban survival kit than a wilderness survival kit. But there is still a huge amount of overlap in a lot of the gear that you use. Just a little bit of a different direction on a few of these items. And I also want to point out that this is a, I'd say a small survival kit. It's not a huge ammo can here. It's a relatively small one. It's not a micro survival kit like an Altoid Tins can. It's not a medium sized survival kit, which may be in, let's say a book bag or a bug out bag. And it's not your home emergency preps, right? At home, you can literally have two Tupperware containers full of emergency gear. This is definitely more on the small side. And so once again, that really kind of determined the type of gear that I could put in here. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. And in no particular order, right? I'm just gonna be pulling the items out just to show you that I was able to get all of this gear in there and kind of going over what items I've included in this survival kit. So the first thing I have is going to be two glow sticks. So first off, these things will last, I think 12 hours each. And during a power outage, let's say, this may be the very first item that you wanna go for, right? You crack one of these open. If you can find your kit, crack one of these open. Now you at least have some light to start working and taking some of the other gear out of here. I'd also included these though for emergency signaling, right? If you think about a lot of urban survival situations, let's say you get trapped in your office building because of a bad earthquake or a tornado comes through, you probably want to get rescued, right? In an urban situation like that, it's more of just, you just have to survive for two, three, four days before rescue can come. And so signaling signaling is pretty important in those situations. And that's where these things can really come in handy. So I do like having glow sticks like this in a lot of survival kits. And for a urban survival situation, you know, this is definitely something nice to have as well. Kind of go along with that. I also have uh, about 20 feet of paracord. And one thing that you can do with paracord and a glow stick is you tie this to um, five, six feet, and then you can start swinging that glow stick around and creates this great big neon green circle. And that's great to use in signaling. So I think that this and this go great together for signaling for help. But paracord is also just one of those very versatile tools that you will find a lot of uses for. You just find all these situations where you have two items that you need to connect together somehow. Um, and that's really where the paracord comes in handy. You can also use this for some medical purposes like creating a splint if you have a broken bone or even just creating a cast for your arm. Something along those lines, creating some kind of makeshift shelter. A lot of UK use cases for having a little bit of paracord. And again, since you probably wanna get rescued in whatever situation you're in, I went with the neon green paracord for the survival kit. At the very least, you know, if you're trapped in your office building, you could just hang this outside your window or something to indicate to rescuers that you're inside of there. So both of these things are pretty bright colored for really signaling for help. Um, and I have these on top because your light source may be one of the very first things that you need in that type of survival situation. So next, let's move along to the multi-tool that I included in that. And this is the Song PowerPlay Hex. And this is a very, pretty standard multi-tool I'd say, except for one major 
function. So a multi-tool is a great item to have in any survival kit, especially an urban survival kit where you can put up with the extra weight. These things are just incredibly versatile. And in here you have uh, tons of tools, right? You have saw blades in case you do need to process a little wood. You have Phillips head screwdrivers and all sorts of little tools in there. And you also have, let's open this up. You have a knife blade in here. You have a can opener, more screwdrivers, another knife blade. All of these things are gonna really come in handy in a survival situation, especially in an urban environment. But this particular one also comes with some hex bits to give you even more added functionality. And again, in a urban situation, these things are gonna come in handy much more so than in a wilderness situation. And I really love this design. You open this up, and let's see, okay, so you open it up like this, and this little part here can actually grab these hex bits like that. So now you got a flathead screwdriver or a star screwdriver or any one of these other bits right here that you can easily use with these pliers or with this multi-tool. And I think for an urban situation where, you know, you don't necessarily know what type of situation you're gonna run into, having that versatility of having all these different bits along with your multi-tool, I think it's gonna be very important. So for this particular build, I included this multi-tool that has such a wide range of functionality. And having such a wide range of tools included in this is really gonna come in handy for all these little odd jobs that may pop up. If you need to replace a circuit breaker in your electrical panel, right? You could use this tool to do that. If you need to work on your car, you need to take a door off the hinges, you're gonna be able to do that with this type of multi-tool here. And I think having that much versatility in your multi-tool is really important for a urban survival kit. So once again, this is the Song Powerplay Hex, and I will have a link to this, as well as a lot of this other gear down in the description below. So the next item that I include in this kit is going to be an emergency blanket. So in an urban environment, creating a heat source, creating a fire is not gonna be your top priority, right? You're already in a pretty enclosed shelter and creating a fire is not always the, the best option, right? It, if you're in an office building, for example, I don't want you creating a fire. The risk of you starting that fire getting out of control or you dying of carbon monoxide poisoning or getting everything covered in smoke, you know, it's not worth the reward of creating that heat source. Instead, I want you to focus on containing your own body's heat. And that's where these emergency blankets come in handy. And this one is actually an emergency sleeping bag. So it fully encloses you in this Mylar blanket and it, it reflects your own body heat back at you, right? In an urban situation, let's say even in the middle of winter, you wanna to get to the smallest room that you can. So that small room is containing your body heat in that one small room rather than your body heat dissipating over a large area and use this blanket, use whatever else you can to keep your own body's heat close by to you and heat yourself up. And so that's why I included this one in this Urban Survival Kit, uh, just a Mylar sleeping bag. So moving along kind of in theme with that, I also included a couple of hand warmers as well. So once again, these things will last you 24 hours. So even if you're in dead of winter, you crack open two of these, you're good for the first 48 hours. In a lot of situations, that's gonna be enough for rescuers to come and find you. And this, you know, I would much prefer you using this rather than creating a fire in an office building or some sort of urban environment. Keep in mind that you're gonna have a hard time finding the fuel as well in an urban environment compared to a wilderness situation. And most natural disasters or emergency situations, they, they Oh, don't last very long, right? You only need to ride it out for 24, 48 hours until you can get rescued. And so I think for the vast majority of the disaster situations, just these hand warmers like this will last you 48 hours and that should be enough in most situations for rescuers to come and find you. Now, another priority for you is going to be water, right? Even in an urban situation, hydration is going to be really important. Now we are somewhat constrained with the amount of size that we have in this kit, but that's why I included the Sawyer Mini. So this is actually one of my favorite water filters, very common or very popular amongst campers. And this comes with this squeeze bag. So I love these collapsible water bottles, right? You see a lot of these in emergency kits nowadays because how lightweight they are and how compact they are. Instead of having a great big, you know, water container in there, this takes up so, so little space. And so how this works is you fill this up with dirty water 
you screw your Sawyer filter onto it and then you drink out of it. You can even squeeze the bag to get that water to shoot out through the filter. And this filter can actually attach to any water bottle as well. So if you find other water bottles around, fill them up with dirty water, you can screw this right onto the top and drink directly out of those. So in a urban environment, like you could go out to the ditch and literally scoop up the water from a ditch or from a puddle somewhere, keep it in this bag. Now you can bring this back in with you and you have uh, access to clean drinking water. And I like this better than something like the Life Straw. Right, the Life Straw, you literally have to get down on your hands and knees and drink water out of a puddle. Uh, with this, you can bring the water with you, right? And so this is one of my favorite water filters, a Sawyer Mini. Once again, I have the links down below in this description. And I think that's a perfect water filter for a small urban survival kit. So moving right along, we also have a little bit of food in this kit. So for this one, I've included the SOS Emergency Food Rations. Now, if this kit was bigger, I could have some freeze-dried meals in there, have some better food, but it's a fairly small kit, so I included these rations instead. Now, these things have nine bars in them. Each of them have about 400 calories in them. I'm pretty confident they taste like garbage. It's probably like eating cardboard, but they have all the fats and um, carbohydrates and protein protein in them that your body really needs in an emergency situation. Now, in most situations, you know, food is not going to be your top priority, right? Water and shelter and warmth are higher priorities, but having food is definitely still pretty nice. Psychologically, it's very nice. It's going to give you that energy that you need to kind of go on and sustain yourself. And I still think it is nice to have in a survival kit. It's not critical but it's nice to have in a short-term survival kit like this, just for that psychological boost, or let's say you do need to go and hike 10 miles, 20 miles to get out of wherever you're at. Maybe you need to hike through the city, let's say. Having this as an energy, as a fuel source, is really gonna come in handy. All right, so the next thing is gonna be a second source of light, and that is the uh, inflatable solar lantern by Illuminate. I am a huge fan of these things. I've been going on about these for years now. And what this is, is a solar charger, or solar panels that charge a small battery in there and then they um, have some small LEDs in there. And the body is actually inflatable. So you blow it up and it helps to fuse the light. And so this is a lantern. So it's cast an omnidirectional light. And I like this because you can keep this outdoors during a um, during the daytime and nighttime, you bring in, you get more than enough light for the entire evening. And so this is probably one of the first items you actually want to pull out. Let us start getting some of that sunlight, start charging up that battery. Some of these, including this one, you can even charge your cell phone off of it. Now, you'd probably have to leave this thing outdoors all day long just to probably get like a half a charge on your, your cell phone. But nonetheless, this is better than nothing, right? Being able to charge your cell phone from the sun is very, very important, especially during emergency situations. So I love that for that reason alone. I love how compact and lightweight this is. It allows me to include it in small survival kits like this. And so the next item that I include in this is going to be a knife. Now, since this is an urban survival kit, I did not go with a full tang knife. I did go with a pocket knife, a, a foldable knife. And the reason I didn't go with a full tang knife is if it was a wilderness survival kit, I definitely would have, right? You're gonna be processing wood with that, processing game. There's a lot of uses. Um, you can use it with a ferro rod if you have a 90 degree spine on it to start a fire. A lot of uses for a full tang knife uh, for a wilderness survival kit. For an urban survival kit, you're really not doing as much of that stuff. You're not gonna be processing wood. I think just a pocket knife is gonna be more than enough, right? This is gonna help you in first aid, help you open up containers. You're gonna find a lot of different uses for a pocket knife like this. And this particular one is the Gonzo Firebird. It has a G10 handle with clips, it has a G lock in there, and weighs just 5.5 ounces. All of those things are really nice. Um, and I, you know, in an urban survival situation, you can use this for self-defense as well, um, which may actually arise during an urban situation, kind of depending on, on the exact scenario. But I, I think having a pocket knife is definitely a good thing to have just for that self-defense purposes alone. But it, again, it's just one of those general purpose items that you're gonna find all sorts of uses cases for, especially with like first aid. Now, the next items that I include are a couple of different items. One is I always like to have plastic bags in my survival kit, right? Plastic bags like this 
are just really, really handy to have in a urban or in any kind of survival kit, just for keeping your gear organized. But you can also fill this up with water. If you find a great puddle, you can fill this up with water, bring it back to your your shelter, wherever that may be. Uh, you can also keep food in there. You can keep fire tinder. You can keep just a lot of gear. You can keep wet clothes in these types of bags. I like including plastic bags in my survival kit. And for this particular one, I've put together just a makeshift basic first aid kit. Now, there I couldn't find any really compact first aid kits that I have, so I just made my own. Very basic, right? I've got a couple of um, filtration ga uh, masks in here. Got some gauze. I got some bandages, and I got some some medical tape in there as well. And in a lot of survival situations, that's all you really need. You don't need a really elaborate first aid kit, right? Your goal is just to stay alive for a few days until you can get rescued. And for a lot of cuts and wounds, you just need to keep them clean. That, that's your entire goal with first aid is to keep them clean, keep them from getting infected. So just some bandages, some gauze, and some tape is all you really need in that situation. And I do have some, some dust masks in there as well, which again could come in handy in a survival situation or um, an emergency situation. And then I also did include a very simple, very basic fire kit that I put together in one of these things as well. Now, I, I was a little reluctant to do this because like I was saying, fire is not always your top priority in an urban survival kit. If you're in your your vehicle or you're in your office building or at a school or your workplace, I don't want you starting a fire in that type of environment. You may have a hard time finding fuel, but to create a, throw in a, a basic fire kit is not that much weight to it. It's not, not that much size. It's pretty straightforward. So I just have a book of waterproof matches here. Nothing real, real fancy about that. And I have a handful of these fire plugs by Bigfoot Bushcraft, Bigfoot Bushcraft fire plugs. And you snap these open, you kind of pull out the threads a little bit, and then you can start a basic fire with that. And that's just for, you know, it kind of depends on your situation. If you can go out back somewhere that's safe and start a fire, it doesn't hurt to have that in here. This really does not take up that much space or that much weight. So I did include a basic, basic um, fire kit along with this survival kit. And so just with those items, we've covered all your necessities. So we have food, we have water, we have shelter, we have warmth with the hand warmers, we have first aid, we have a light source, we have emergency signaling with the glow sticks, we have self-defense with the pocket knife. That's pretty much everything that you really need or all the categories that you really wanna cover in an urban survival kit. So I wanna know, what do you guys think about my urban survival kit build? Is there anything else that you guys would have included in there or would have swapped out for any of my other items? I really want to know. Comment down below. And don't forget, I will have links to many of these items down in the description below. And if you want to watch some more survival kit breakdowns, check out this playlist I have right here for a few of my other videos. Don't forget to subscribe for more prepping and survival videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next video.